after the tetrahedral theory given by Lothian Green, we now move to the theory of continental drift. One major shift today, now, is during Lothian Green, we had emphasized on the permanency of continents and oceans. That is, continents and oceans are fixed on the Earth's surface. From this ideology, from this line of thinking, we are now shifting towards the line of thinking of continental drift. That means the continents and ocean bodies are drifting. They are not static on the Earth's surface. So, the credit of putting forth a theory with respect to continents and oceans moving and a paradigm shift from the earlier ideology of continents and oceans being permanent on the Earth's surface goes to the two persons F. B. Taylor and Wegener. These two persons put forth the continental drift theory. First it was given by Taylor in 1908 and later it was given by Alfred Wegener in 1912. So first let us go through the continental drift theory of Taylor. When this Taylor, when Taylor proposed this theory, as usual, there was a question which he tried to solve with this theory. We'll just go through the question first. What was the question which was in Taylor's mind which he tried to solve with this theory? Now, if you take a look at the physical map of the world, you will find the distribution of fold mountains in a peculiar way. For example, in North America, we have the Rockies on the western coast of North America arranged in north-south direction. Same with South America, you have the Andes on the western margin of South America arranged again in north-south way. Other fold mountains, for example, Alps, the Himalayas in continuation, all these are arranged in an east-west manner. Why are they arranged in this manner? Why are the fold mountains arranged on the Earth's surface in this manner? This is the question which Taylor wanted to solve. He gave this theory for solving this question. So as usual, what are the assumptions for the theory? Taylor assumed that the Earth's crust the Earth's crust is made up of Cl, silica, aluminium, which is lighter and the oceanic crust is made up of Sima, silica, magnesium, which is heavier. And Cl is floating over Sima. So the Earth's, the continental landmass is lighter and it is floating over a tensor body. Hence, it could move. This is the assumption Taylor made. Now, if you look at the forces for the movement of the continents, these forces as given by Taylor were the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun. More so over, it was the gravitational pull of the moon because it was nearer to the earth's surface than the sun which is a little bit far away, not little bit, lots of far away. So it was the gravitational pull of the moon which played a major role in the drifting of the continents. Now, my dear friends, I would like to emphasize here on the word drift. We use the word drift when there is a motion on which, in which the body which is in motion does not have any control over it. Therefore, we say it's a drift. Same way, the continents are drifting and in this movement, the continents don't have any control over themselves. They are drifting because of an external force which is the tidal pull of the moon, the gravitational force of the moon. So, this is the force which Taylor gave for the drifting of the continents. Now, if you come to the theory, what is the actual theory? Taylor said that initially during the Cretaceous period, the landmass, the total landmass on the Earth's surface was divided into two parts. In the northern hemisphere near the North Pole, you have the Laurasia or the Angara land. The Laurasia or the Angara land in the North Pole and in the southern hemisphere near the South Pole, you have the Gondwana land. So there were two land masses during the Cretaceous period, Angara land and the Gondwana land. Now, because of the tidal forces of the moon, there were two types of movements. One, 
the movement of the landmass towards the west and second the movement of the landmass towards the equator so there were two movements the movement of the landmass towards the west and towards the equator due to the tidal force of the moon these landmass uh, landmasses they started moving but but all the landmass could not move in unison so these landmasses they ruptured so if you look at the angara land from the angara land due to the breaking and rupturing of the angara land we have the formation of greenland north america eurasian the whole of the eurasian portion this all of this originated from the angara land and if you look at the gondwana land you have the landmass in the southern hemisphere as the broken parts of the gondwana land as as in you have antarctica south america even the indian peninsula landmass australia new zealand madagascar africa all these landmasses are products of the gondwana land so now what you have is the landmasses at the north pole and the south pole they start moving towards the equator and towards the west and the movement because of the movement there is a rupture and breaking out of this landmass and you have the different continents being formed now how did the fold mountains originate the landmasses which were moving towards the west let's take for example north america and south america when they were moving towards the west the frontal edges of these landmasses they experience resistance due to this resistance the frontal parts these landmasses were moving in lobe form and the frontal parts they experience resistance and they got raised as the fold mountains thus you have the rockies and the andes arranged on the western part of the continents and in a north south direction so what about the alps and the himalayas the land masses which were moving towards the equator okay indian peninsula from the southern part it was moving towards the equator and so also the eurasian part was moving towards the equator these two land masses they collided and the frontal edges got uplifted in the form of himalayas so you have the fold mountains of himalayas being formed in a east west manner similarly when the african land mass and the europe european land mass they collided you have the formation of or they came together you have the formation of the alps which is again in east west man so this is the theory given by f b taylor regarding the continental drifting okay now if you look at the points of criticism of this theory one thing should be noted is that he had assumed that cl was floating over saima so if cl is floating over saima then how come the frontal edges they experience resistance for the upliftment of such huge rockies and these mountains similarly a displacement of just 30 35 40 kilometers would have been enough for the formation of fold mountains but here he speaks of displacements of hundreds and thousands of kilometers which is not required for the upliftment of these mountains but whatever is the criticism point the credit must be given to fb taylor for bringing in the concept of drifting or the movement of the continents and shifting away from the permanency of continents and ocean thinking so that is the theory of fb taylor fb taylor's continental drift press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update from the unique academy don't forget to like coming and subscribe to our channel stay tuned today we start with the first topic of the subject geography the name of the topic is geological time scale what is this geological time scale this geological time scale gives us the evolution evolutionary history of earth with respect to the biological events and the geographical events why is this geological time scale important first we need to understand that any phenomena which has occurred on earth with respect to geography it has occurred over thousands and millions of years so it is not possible for us to exactly designate an event from so and so date to so and so date so what have we done we have totally gone for giving a geological time scale to these events 
For example, you might be knowing the term Jurassic. Yes, immediately you recollect dinosaurs. So Jurassic is equivalent to dinosaurs. That was the age when dinosaurs, they flourished over the earth. So we'll have to study this geological time scheme.